Then it was fourth and goal on the two-yard line, and we needed a touchdown to cap off our winning season and move into the playoffs. Otherwise, our season was over. When you're only two yards away from the goal line, it doesn't seem like much of an obstacle. But we had started that series after a great punt return, first down and goal on the one-yard line. The ensuing three plays had netted us a one-yard loss, and that simple two yards seemed like an unimaginable gulf. I called an end-around play because our previous three handoffs into the middle of the line had achieved less than nothing as we were moving backward. I knew if we could get our speedy halfback around the corner, we would score and win. The only thing that stood in our way was the opposing team's defensive end, who hadn't performed particularly well that night. As our team broke the huddle, I was confident and somehow knew that my innate coaching prowess would get us the victory. But my counterpart across the field displayed his own coaching prowess as he shifted the defense. I instantly realized that the play I had called involving our best offensive lineman pulling to block their mediocre defensive end, allowing our speedy halfback to get around the corner, had gone up in smoke. And now, their other defensive end, who was an all-state performer destined for the state university, stood between us and the goal line. And the only blocker we had on that play would be Robert Garrett Wakefield. Having no timeouts left, I was forced to rely on every coach's last resort. I prayed. As our quarterback took the ball from the center, everything seemed to move in slow motion. He turned and deftly handed the ball to our speedy halfback, who raced toward the sideline, cradling the ball on his right arm. Their all-state defensive end looked 12 feet tall and solid as the Great Wall of China as Wakefield stumbled down the line. Every coach learns that players cannot be measured simply by height and weight. There are certain intangibles that enter the scene at the most unexpected times. Just when everybody in the stadium, including me, was certain that Wakefield would be brushed off like an annoying gnat and our halfback would be crushed by their defensive end, a collision took place and somehow their all-state defensive end destined for the State University and the NFL found himself flat on his back, with Truman's own Robert Garrett Wakefield lying atop him as our halfback scampered into the end zone. I never saw Wakefield trip, stumble, or even hesitate after that play. Somehow, in the blink of an eye, he had transformed into the man who stood before me at the retirement banquet that night. I proudly proclaimed, Rob, we're all proud of you and everything you've done since your days at Truman High. I thought of him standing there before the Supreme Court and said, I really don't know how you do it. He waved off the compliment and said some nice things about me. Then, just as he was moving away, he whirled and asked, Coach, do you remember? I smiled, nodded, and assured him, How could I ever forget? Anyone eavesdropping on our private moment would have been baffled by our exchange. But I knew what he meant, and he knew that I knew. Those are the moments that bind us together forever. I reveled in the next few minutes, enjoying similar fond memories with many of my boys, until a somewhat self-absorbed, pompous gentleman from the school board walked to the podium and began tapping on the microphone. He took a sheet of paper from his jacket pocket and unfolded it on the podium. In a monotone voice, he droned on as he read the prepared statement, recounting the statistics and accomplishments that made up my life. Then he mercifully stopped talking and sat down, and I was greeted with a thunderous standing ovation as I approached the podium. As I gazed out over the sea of faces that each held a special place in my heart and soul, I waited for the applause to die down. As the room fell silent, I hoped that my mind and voice would not fail me. In an almost disembodied way, I heard myself say, Thank you all for being here and sharing this special night with me. As Truman High Eagles, we have enjoyed winning seasons. We've suffered losing seasons. We've celebrated a few championship seasons. And we've even experienced one season of hope.